need to profile your program but aren't sure where to start, there is a new profiling tool in Visual Studio called the Counters tool that you should definitely check out, which we're going to do continuing our profiling series on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today we are continuing our very long and awesome profiling series in Visual Studio. So to do that, I am once again joined by Sagar Shetty, who's a PM on the profiling team. Welcome, Sagar. Thanks, Leslie. Good to be back. Cool. So we've talked about a lot of different profiling tools on the show lately. And uh, what are we going to talk about today? Yeah. So like you said, today, we're going to be continuing the profiling toolbox series, talking about another tool in the toolbox. And that is the .NET counters tool, which is a tool that will help us visualize .NET counters right from within the Visual Studio Profiler. That's great. So why is this important to people? Yeah. So I think we should start with talking a little bit about what .NET counters are. So mm -hmm. .NET counters in the first place, it's a tool uh, developed by the .NET team, uh, as you might imagine. And basically, they're a collection of uh, first level kind of metrics and, and diagnostics. So basically they're a collection of metrics that kind of help you get a better understanding of how your application is performing, especially if you've never really done any sort of performance investigation before. So they're really meant to kind of help you start your investigation. And up until this point, the primary way you'd visualize these metrics and counters was through the command line. And basically what we've done with the .NET counters tool is allow you to visualize right from within Visual Studio, like the profiler within Visual Studio. And so with that, you get tons of extra capabilities in terms of more visual representation and graphs, um, more analysis and robust tables with metrics um, associated with those counters. And because it's in the profiler, something we're going to stress today is you can run the counters tool with other tools for really nice and deeper uh, performance investigation. So we're going to kind of look at all of those things. That's awesome. I know like as powerful as the command line is it's not always the most um, accessible thing for everybody, definitely. So it's nice to have another tool as an alternative. Right, and, and the command line tends to be like that interface that you know you know very well, Leslie. That like it's kind of that that MVP once in a, like it's that starting place, <laughs> right? But then we're kind of moving it along and bringing this individual studio. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So, so let's see it in action. Yeah, let's just jump right into Visual Studio, and I and I have a demo prepared today. So. Uh, First thing we want to do, of course, is launch the counters tool. And to do this, it's the same experience as all the other profiling tools, which is to get to the performance profiler. So how do you do that? If you've watched any of our other videos, you've probably seen this already. But you can go to the context menu and go to debug and then launch the, this performance profiler um, right here. There's also a keyboard shortcut Alt F2. If you ever forget that, it's, it's always listed here in the context menu. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch that. And now we get to this page. And for today, uh, we're talking about the counters tool. So of course, we want to have .NET counters selected. And something we've talked about before, Leslie, is that you can run multiple of our tools at once. And I know we've mentioned this before, but that's something I especially want to stress today. And hopefully, today I prove um, one in one example of why that's really valuable. And so in this demo, I actually want to run the counters tool with the CPU usage tool. Um, cool. One last quick note before um, I run it is just with a lot of our tools, you have these like gear icons next to them. Um, that allows you to configure extra settings in case you're interested. So for the counters tool, I'm just going to go ahead and click on this just so in case people are interested. Oh. But these are essentially the uh, counter providers that's specified by .NET and, and the .NET counters tool. And currently, the um, the tool we have in the profiler supports all of the tools or all of the counters rather that you would um, already get to see from the command line interface. And over time, you can imagine we're going to add more to this and allow you to add custom counters. But that's more kind of in the future. This is a new UX experience, isn't it? Like, I feel like I'm seeing this for the first time. Yeah, so um, the the this is newer. Yeah, the counter show, I believe, has been out for about a year now. Um, but but this this UI page is a little bit more recent than that. Yep. Awesome. It's cool how over the course of this profiling series we've been doing, you can see the progression of just making the profiling tools even cooler than they already are. So uh, Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're spending a lot of time in terms of revamping the UX for all of our tools. And uh, yeah, this page is just one of the many examples of that. And you can also kind of change the intervals as far as collection if you want to kind of collect more or less. Um, so for now, I'm just going to leave the defaults because that's good enough for our purposes today. Hit OK, and then go ahead and start. And so now this is going to launch my application and um, start collecting data. So now is a good time to talk a little bit about what the demo app we're going to use today is. 
So this is an application we've actually showed off a little bit um, before in some of the previous episodes. Uh, shout out to David Fowler uh, from the .NET team because this is his application. But basically, um, this is an ASP.NET Scenarios app that kind of shows off various scenarios in, um, in .NET that you might be doing and kind of shows you some, some good and bad practices as fa far as coding patterns. And we'll kind of dig into all of that. So as you can see, there's various scenarios here as far as kind of making uh, returning and retrieving JSON responses, JSON posts. Uh, and so we're going to run a few of these scenarios. And actually to do that today, I have like a command line utility, which essentially will allow me to generate um, a lot of load um, on this application instead of kind of manually clicking over and over and over again. So I'm going to run a few of these scenarios, the first three actually. So this first command is when I essentially send about um, 1,500 requests to the first scenario. So that's going to run. I'm going to let that run real quick. And so that's kind of the first scenario about retrieving and returning a JSON response. Um, I have a couple more commands for the other two that I'd like to run. So um, this next one is about the HTTP uh, client to retrieve a JSON response. And that's going to run. And then lastly, uh, we're going to do the big JSON post scenario. Um, and so um, now we've essentially generated some load on our application. Let's go back to Visual Studio. And so as we can see here, the counters tool is up and running. We have the list of counters um, as specified by the counters providers, ton of different metrics that are all kind of showing the current value. We have the swim lane up here um, kind of showing the graph of, of CPU utilization. I'm going to go ahead and stop this collection just so this diag session doesn't get too big. <laughs> and we'll kind of do a deeper dive into uh, some of the individual metrics. Cool. And so as it's running, basically what it shows you is just the current value of the specific counters. But now that we've stopped collection, as you can see, we're getting a few more data points for each of the counters. Basically, um, over the entire time range, what was the minimum value for each counter over the time, the max, and the average. Um, and just to kind of piece this apart a little bit, we have a lot of different counters here that give you information on tons of different aspects of your application. We have things like allocation rate, stuff about different timers, CPU usage a number of counters around garbage collection in terms of um, like the size of how many you know, Gen 1 objects you have, um, how many times garbage collection is running for various generations. And so That's I'd really encourage people to kind of go and look at all these counters, because there's just a ton of different metrics mm -hmm. that cover a lot of ground. That's interesting. So do you still get some of those counters, like the garbage collection one and the CPU usage one specifically, if you didn't use the CPU usage tool and the uh, garbage collector tools? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So th the counters you get are specified by that UI we looked at on the summary page, that little gear icon. So regardless of whether you run CPU usage or any of those other tools, you're going to get all of these counters. Nice. Um, and so yeah, you'll you'll really get a lot of of these insights even if you run if you don't run those other tools. Um, but it's still good to run the tools in tandem as as we'll as we'll see later on in the demo. Um, so okay, um, we have a bunch of different counters. One question might be you know. How do I start my investigation? Like, what counters really matter? Like, what, what what counters would I want to look at first? And to be honest, this is going to depend kind of on the nature of your investigation. I'm going to suggest a few counters here today, just in the investigation I have in the demo that might be interesting. Um, and, and for that, I'll call out the CPU usage counter, um, just because uh, CPU usage is really interesting to look at. A lot of performance problems are related to CPU utilization, and so that's always an interesting counter to look at. Of course, we already we did run this with the CPU usage tool. So as you're probably seeing here, these two graphs are very similar. And, and as you probably noticed, whenever you click a checkbox next to a counter, you get a graph in the simulant. So you can kind of help visualize how, how the counter changed over time. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as other useful counters, I also want to look at those garbage uh, collection counters that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So for that specifically for today, I'm going to highlight the Gen 0 GC count, the Gen 1 GC count, and the Gen 2 GC count. So um, in, in previous episodes, Leslie, I know we've talked a little bit about garbage collection before, uh, especially with the .NET object allocation tool. Mm -hmm. and, and just as a refresher um, for anyone that, that may not remember or is kind of don't necessarily know a whole lot about garbage collection, basically it's this awesome way that .NET kind of automatically helps manage your memory and kind of cleans up a lot of memory um, that's being allocated towards unused objects. Um, so that's great that that is, exists. But it is um, quite expensive for the CPU. And unfortunately, um, 
in software development and in a lot of applications, sometimes you might find yourself in situations where you're forcing the garbage collector to run constantly. And that can lead to a lot of performance problems. And so with the Gen 0, the Gen 1, the Gen 2 uh, GC counts, you're essentially looking at how many um, garbage collections happen for that generation of object over a period of time. And if, if you can see, whenever we ran those scenarios, and that's kind of indicated by these spikes in CPU, we're also forcing the GC to run. And so that's something that we kind of see right here from these counter graphs, and that's something we're going to want to look at a little bit more um, in the future. And I'm also going to highlight the large object heap size. And so basically what this is is a portion of memory that is reserved for objects that take up a lot of memory. So you want to be very careful about when you're allocating memory that goes on the large object heap, because generally speaking, when you do this, you're also kind of forcing the GC to run on the back end because these objects take up so much memory that if, it, okay, it's one thing to take up a lot of the memory, but if you don't actually need these objects to be stored in memory and maintained, you're going to force the GC to run a lot. So it's something to keep in mind. So kind of from these counters, um, Leslie, the point I'm trying to make is that we, we ran this investigation. We didn't really know a whole lot about the performance of our application to begin with. We ran a few scenarios. We see that the CPU is being utilized a good amount and that we see that garbage collection is running. So from here, from the counters tool, I may ask myself the question now, like, okay, I, I see that all these things are happening. I see these metrics. Where in my code, like what functions are costly right now? Like what is forcing the garbage collector to run so much? And where in my code can I potentially optimize this? And this is where I get back to how the counters tool really plays well with other tools. And I, I've, for now, I've run it with the CPU usage tool. So we're actually going to jump into the CPU usage tool to kind of help answer that question. Mm -hmm. So uh, before I quick do that quickly, one thing with the swim lanes, and this is consistent across all of our tools, is it's not just a graph. It's also a way to kind of filter down by time. And so I can kind of click here and drag. And so I'm just going to drag around this first spike. And what this is going to do is update our table and our data set to just this selected time range across all of our tools. So this also filtered down for the CPU usage tool. And now finally, I want to jump over to the CPU usage tool. I'm going to jump over there. Let me drag this up a little bit so that everyone can see the table. And I'm actually just going to go to the open details view, although um, this, the summary page already kind of shows the hot path, which is kind of what I wanted to go back to, um, to kind of figure out what are the, um, the really hot um, functions that are taking up a lot of our, our CPU time. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it seems to be this sort of get Pokemon buffered string async function that is taking up a lot of our CPU usage time and is kind of uh, expensive. So uh, another um, kind of great aspect of being right within VS is like the fact that you can kind of get the source. And so let me just double click on this. Makes sense. Oh. There's a lot of Pokemon. So yeah. <laughs> so now we're uh, at the CPU usage tool on the summary page, kind of looking at the hot path. And we see that it seems like um, this Pokemon service, get Pokemon buffered string async function seems to be a function where our CPU is spending a lot of time. I'm just going to click on this open details view and get to the call tree where I can kind of see the full call tree, full call stack. Uh, and, and I see that this is kind of on the hot path. So one thing I might want to do now that I see that this function is on the hot path is investigate this further. And because we're in Visual Studio, we have this close connection to source code. And I can ultimately kind of look at my source code and see maybe how I might optimize this a little bit more. Uh, so I can kind of double click and, and get back to source. Um, I actually have the function up right here. So now we're going to look at this function right here, the get Pokemon buffered string async function. And um, one of the reasons why this particular function uh, might be taking up a lot of CPU time and as well as force a lot of garbage collection. So Leslie, if you notice within this function, essentially what we're doing is we're creating this variable, this, this JSON variable, this massive mm -hmm. JSON object, because we're, we're kind of retrieve, we're retrieving the JSON object and then returning it back. Um, yeah. And essentially what you're doing is if you kind of put this in a variable and store this in memory, this massive object, this goes straight on that large object heap that we were talking about earlier. And this mm -hmm. is what's forcing the garbage collection. Yeah. Um, and so, like I said, um, David Fowler is the one that, that wrote this application. And a, a big part of this application is kind of showing off good and bad patterns. And this is an example of one. one problematic <laughs> pattern. And so I'd encourage people, we'll link to the, the this repo, but like he has examples of how you might rectify this issue. Uh, one kind of solution as he suggests is to, just to kind of read um, 
from a stream asynchronously, kind of stream the JSON object and read from that asynchronously in, instead of kind of having this, this massive JSON variable being stored over and over again. And he kind of has a way of, of doing that further below in case you're interested at looking at an example. Yeah. But. Plus one to that repo. That repo is really good about explaining like good async practices and bad async practices. For sure. It, yeah. it's, it's a really educational repo. But mm -hmm. um, kind of walking back to the CPU usage tool a bit, or sorry, the counters tool, in terms of where we started this investigation, uh, you know, when we started it, we didn't really know a whole lot about how our application was performing. We had not run a profiling session on it before. Um, we used the counters metrics to kind of get a high level snapshot or high level overview of how our application was performing. We dug into various counters in particular, the CPU usage and garbage collection counters. And then ultimately we used those counters to make an informed decision on which tools to select next and we selected the CPU usage tool um, because that's a tool that's more designed for a deeper dive, a deeper investigation on those specific kind of areas. And then ultimately we found a function that we could optimize um, that was using perhaps a bit of a bad pattern in terms of storing um, just a large JSON you know, object in, in memory or in, in a variable. So yeah, that's kind of how that investigation worked out. That's great. So overall, it seems like this the counters tool would be the best tool to start with if you don't know where to start, right? With your um, performance profiling journey. Right, so that's a huge, exactly. Uh, that, well said, that's a, that's a huge motivation for using the counters tool. Great entryway. It doesn't necessarily give you that deep dive, but that's also not really the point of the tool. It really gives you that high level overview. Mm -hmm. And then from there you go to your CPU usage tools, maybe an events viewer, the async, tool, just a lot of other tools, but it really helps you um, kind of get that, that initial snapshot of how, how your application's performing. That's great. So it, uh, if people want to learn more, where should they go? Yeah, so with all of our tools, we have uh, docs. Um, so that kind of gives you the deeper dives. Uh, definitely check out our other Toolbox episodes because kind of as we've pointed out with, with this tool, you're going to be using a lot of the other tools with this tool. So, uh, you know, we can definitely link, like, for example, the CPU usage tool. Uh, just to kind of reiterate a few of the key, I think, pairings that work well. I think the CPU usage tool, hopefully, as I demonstrated today, works really well with this tool. Um, if you're doing a lot of stuff with asynchronous code, you want to kind of get a better understanding of what tasks might be taking a long time. The async tool works well. Um, I mentioned the events viewer as well. One of the counters is related to exceptions. And within the events viewer tool, we show you a ton of events. And uh, we haven't made a toolbox episode on the events viewer, but that kind of segues into what's coming next. That is kind of our next planned episode um, going after the, the events viewer. And with that tool, you'll see that there are a lot of events and information emitted. And one of them, if you have like, well, you'll see in, in the next episode, but if you have like the CLR exceptions event uh, provider enabled, um, you can kind of get a nice understanding of what kind of exceptions are being thrown in your application. So there's a lot of different pairings. But to kind of answer your question, as far as if you want to learn more, you know, we're constantly trying to put out blog posts. Um, all the tools have docs and check out our, our entire toolbox series. Awesome. It's just, it's really great since this is one of the newer profiling tools that now there's kind of like a, a first stop for those who are new to profiling, especially, or just don't know where to start. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So, and as you mentioned, uh, next time we're probably going to be talking about the events viewer tool. So that's yep. really exciting. So we're continuing our profiling series and yeah, thank you so much once again for, for coming and sharing Sagar. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Pleasure as always, Leslie. Thanks. Great. So until next time, happy coding. Happy profiling.